today I deliver some solid fist to a really nice person. That's right, folks, we are back with more Indomitus painting. It's been a week since we touched anything from the box, and that's frankly too long. These are exciting miniatures, and I'm itching to get my hands on them. Today, we're going to be working on a Blade Guard Captain for the wonderful Black Wolf 83 over on Twitter. Uh, it's painted as Imperial Fists. I know that yellow armor is something that a lot of people have a bit of a worry about. I've got a pretty good method for it. It's a little bit long-winded, I'm not going to lie, but I think it's worth it for the results. So uh, stay tuned and you'll find out about that. Just before we get into the meat of the video, I've just got to say a huge thank you to the Black Wolf 83. He gifted me the entire Indomitus box set. He is going to be responsible for most of the Indomitus content I'm able to make, as well as bolstering my own very own Blood Angel successor army with lots of lovely Indomitus miniatures. I cannot thank you enough for that, Black Wolf 83. I did say to him um, when he said that he wanted to give me the whole box, I said, I, I can't take the whole thing, that wouldn't be fair. Let me do a commission for you to repay you for it. So this piece is the commission that I am doing for him to repay him for hit. For hit? For it. You're going to get to enjoy that. Uh, with me and hopefully you'll be able to pick up a few tips on how I approach Imperial Fists and that'll be handy for you. Let's get into it, let's stop chatting. I'll see you in the down cam everyone. Okie dokie, let's waste no time getting into this then. Here are my sub assemblies, the shield, the tilting plate and everything else assembled on the miniature. I'm going to just give it a quick spray of black. My airbrush was being very naughty today so uh, luckily I only needed to spray black and then I went and gave it a thorough clean before getting into this Avalon sunset now. And we're just going to spray over that black with the Avalon Sunset. I personally really like Avalon over black. I like to build the brightness in myself. And I like to have that sort of desaturation that it gives in the shadows. So this is a preference thing. You could obviously go over white or grey if, if that's your preference. We'll grab our Art Black Scale 75 Artist Paint now. Any black will do though. And we'll start to just re-black the areas that need to be black. So basically anything that's going to be metallic, anything that's going to be black, anything that's going to be dark brown, those are all areas that we're going to hit with this black to bring them back to a good base to do those things on. And that's how we're going to look after that's been done. Okay, let's start off getting some glazed shadows onto this yellow. So we're going to start off with Woodland Brown. This is a very lengthy process, and so there's going to be a lot of skipping. You can see it's a very thin glaze. And we're going to be jumping forward through various stages of this. We're just going to gently glaze shadows into the areas where we want them to live. And it's going to take a lot of coats to build this up. It's going to be very, very subtle at first. You can see here it looks like nothing's happening. But after a while, you can now see I've built in this really literally perfect transition uh, and that's why we use this glazing method we'll then go to a darker brown in this case i've used harvest again do feel free to substitute these paints for your own things in your collection as well you can see now that that glaze is getting more intense we're starting to get a real shadowed look now for the final one we'll go to muddy mournfang would have probably been my choice but mournfang hadn't arrived in the post yet at the time of filming this so I went with Muddy, and you can see I'm just continuing that same process, just reinforcing those glazes. And each time I switch to a darker brown, I tighten them up a little bit as well, get a bit smaller. And you can see it gives us just such a smooth transition into those shadows. It's really, really pretty. From there now, we'll go back to Avaland and just throw in a few edge highlights. I do like to, even if I've got a nice sort of set of blended fades and the volumes are all looking kind of good, I do still like to add a few edge highlights just for a bit of pop. It's a nice technique just for shape defining and, and the like. So we do run around with our Avaland and start to get some of that going on. And that's what it's going to look like once they're all kind of mapped in. And then using that map, we're going to start with a pale yellow. In this case, I'm using NMM Gold Highlight from Reaper. Again, pick one, pick a pale yellow that you like and uh, we'll just start to <clears throat> follow the edge highlights that we already placed in and 
just begin to add in some tighter, smaller, more shrunken, more precise edge highlights following in those same areas. Every now and again we might decide we want to get a bit textural but at the end of it all that's what it will look like. And then one final pass with dragon white here and again just whatever your pure white of choice is jump in there and just pick out the very corners the very edges get really really fine here any areas that you've got textural highlighting then obviously just reinforce that like i'm doing on the knee plate there in the areas where it's neat and sharp keep it neat and sharp nice and simple and now with all that highlighting up and all that shading down you can see we've got a really good amount of contrast in that yellow armor now it's looking really nice and bright and poppy but I do want to just get a bit more vibrancy into it. So contrast and yellow to the rescue. And we're just going to give a very thin, very even coat over everything here. Just to tie those colours together and give a little bit more vibrancy to that yellow. It's so one of the things I really love about and yellow is that after you've done a yellow workup, if it is looking a little dull, if you're not super happy with how much it's how much punch it's got, just a really thin, even glaze of this and yellow over every single surface will just filter the colours. I'm going to highlight blacks now, starting with bright turquoise. And I'm not actually hitting all of my blacks here, but you'll see the areas as we start to work through. I'm going to start on this knee pad here and just start glazing in towards the top surface of it. This is a much heavier glaze than when we were glazing the yellows down, because we're going to blend it back with black. So we can afford to be a bit rougher with this. We're going to start just going around these black areas, bringing this glaze in. And now starting to add some white to it and continuing the same process. You get a good idea now of the areas that I've decided to pick for this. It's basically the soft armor and the gun handle that I highlight differently. The rest of it I've highlighted with this turquoise. There you go, that's after two stages of highlight. I want to go a bit further though. So let's get a bit more white into our turquoise now really start to get bright, really start to get punchy. Also let my paint just thicken up a little here. You can see we're, we're going thinner and thinner and more and more careful as we add these highlights in. Starting to look good. I still think we can get away with one more at least though. One more pass. Here we go. Let's get real bright now. Just really picking out those pinpoint areas. Remember, this is a size three brush as well. And for processes like this, where you're highlighting with very thin paint, a good big brush like that with a really fine point on it is ideal because it's gonna hold lots of paint. It's gonna allow you to not have to constantly be re-dipping and losing your concentration. There we go. So we're starting to get really, really bright now. This is starting to look very, very nice. I want to just pick out a couple of tiny dots with some pure white. So this is just that dragon white again that I was using previously. Just pick out a few tiny little spots here and there, much like we did with the yellow armor, just finding those really little, just peak areas to just bring them up a bit more than everything else. And then with a nice black glaze, this is quite a heavy black glaze, we can just fix some of the transitions. So we just look for the bottom of the highlights where the highlights go into the black itself. We just start to blend them downwards, just to make some of those transitions a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. Okay, so that's what we're left with once we're finished with the blacks. I really like working blacks up this way. And then we're just going to grab some greys, and again we'll go progressively lighter for a couple of stages here just to hit those soft armor panels and uh, the gun handle. And I'm really just gonna blitz through this part. It's, it's the same sort of process, just with some grays. And then at the end of that, painting was interrupted as mail arrived. Lovely new mail, some new miniatures that I'd commissioned and uh, some paints, including that Morthang Brown that I needed. Okay, Zandri Dust is our next colour for this, and uh, we're going to start hitting all of our bone and parchment areas with this, so we'll just do a quick tour round. Anything that's bone or parchment is going to get a, a good even coat of thinned down Zandri Dust. And 
And then the way we're gonna separate the bone and the parchment is with two different shades. Agrax for the bone, Seraphim Sepia for the parchment. And that's really gonna give us a good sense of separation as you'll see. So we've got this really dark shade going onto the bone now. And that's gonna give us a lot of pop to that. It's gonna really give us a lot of contrast there. But then, as you can see on the parchment here, we're going with the sepia, which is more of a, a nice all over tone that just sort of yellows that parchment off a little bit. And then using combinations of Zandri dust and iron rack skin, we're gonna highlight all of those areas back up. And again, not a great deal of difference in how we highlight them, but we will take the bone probably slightly lighter than we take the parchment. So the bone ends up being this sort of really high contrast, um, very dark brown to very light, almost white, and the parchment ends up just having a bit more of an even colour spread across it with a little bit of a lower overall contrast, which of course is what we want there because we're going to put a load of black scribble over it at the end. So you'll just see a few, few sped up snaps of footage here of me highlighting both of those areas in various different ways. I'm just trying to keep that separation there, trying to keep them looking like different areas despite being made from the same colours. Continue to work up now, eventually get into these really pale, this is basically pure white, in fact I think this is pure white by this point, we're just picking out really just tiny tiny little dots. Uh, for the metallics again I'm going to kind of rush through them, we're using dark aluminium and gold from Viejo Metal Colour, Rakeland and Nolan Oil from Games Workshop and uh, as you're gonna see here, we're just gonna quickly get all the silvers in with the dark aluminium, get all the golds in with the gold, and then shade through um, the silvers with some Nuln Oil, which you're gonna see in this next clip. Just very quickly lather on the Nuln Oil, you know you love it. And then just, yeah, tidy up some of those metallics with, uh, with the base color again, just anywhere where they've got a bit too dark or a bit grimy. And we'll do exactly the same thing with the golds, but obviously using the Rakeland, and this is what you're gonna be left with. Like I say, I'm glossing over that just because you've seen it a million times. It's a very familiar metal workup. We're gonna deal with some brown leathers next, using my newly arrived Mornfang Brown and some Rhinox Hide. Starting off over that black with just some nice thin Rhinox hide to start to build in the sense of brown. Um, I like starting from black and still leaving the deepest shadows in black and just really hitting most of the surfaces with the Rhinox hide. I find that that looks a lot better to my eye. So just, you know, pouches, gun holster, belt, that kind of stuff. And then slowly working in more and more Mornfang brown to that mix as we do that sort of what I call Morse code highlighting, just sort of adding texture using dots and dashes. More and more and more Mornfang brown. Just getting brighter and brighter and nearer and nearer to the edges, but always using these rough dots. And then eventually this has got a touch of iron rack skin in it now, just to give a final little bright edge to the, uh, to the leather, which looks super good, I think. Finally, we're gonna go into some corn red. This is sort of the last of just mopping up little details now. We're gonna get the, uh, the purity seals dealt with, so just quickly dot those in in corn red. I also quickly grabbed the sword handle while I was there. Just did exactly the same work up on the sword handle as on the, uh, on the purity seals. So we'll get all those just knobbed in quickly with some corn red. And then into some Nuln Oil Gloss. Quick splash over with that, unceremoniously. And then a couple of pinks just made from the corn red with a bit of iron rack skin added to it, just to add some little highlights. I sort of keep the highlights fairly directional, kind of keep them on one side of the parchment of the uh, Puri Seal wax. Grab some thin down black now, start doing all the scribble on the parchment and this little, uh, this little halving on the tilting plate. Again, glossing over these bits just because they're all things that you see me do quite frequently. We paint a fair number of Space Marines on the channel, so you've seen me fill in the parchment before. Uh, but I did want to show this bit because it's got a nice little bit of wear and tear effect on it. You can, you can see here we fill it in black and then just come back in with Avalon Sunset and use a similar sort of dotting and dashing technique to how we highlight the leather. But this time it produces scratches in that black as if to imply the black is on top of the yellow. 
A quick bit of Cadian and Rakeland for the face, and again, this is going to be another part that we just do quite quickly here. There's so little face showing on this miniature, it really is just a tiny sliver. Um, the whole of the face that's showing is about the same amount of space that the eye lenses of a normal marine take up. So again, there wasn't much point in, uh, in showing a lot on it. Uh, I'll go back to that bright turquoise from very early on, just to glaze a bit of sort of energy around the uh, power emitter of the power weapon. Highlight that with some turquoise and white. And then finally, we're going to get on to showing you a little bit of, uh, of basing here. This is just um, a cool basing technique that I like to do. So I'll grab a black and a white, um, and I'm going to basically start sketching in some highlights uh, to form a rough gradient. So I'm just going to start mixing greys and getting lighter and lighter and lighter, and just sort of sketching very roughly how I want my highlights to look on this. What that's going to do is provide me a nice kind of underpainted background surface upon which I can then build um, some more effects to, to get some nice texture and some nice brightness. So you can see here we're just getting brighter and brighter, being a little bit more careful as we get into these highlights just to stick to sort of edges. And then we're going to wash over the whole thing with some really, really thin down rhinoxide. And that's going to sort of pull that gradient back, blend it together, give a brown hue to the shades. And then an overbrush, which you can see here, I'm actually showing you how the paint goes on. It's not a dry brush, uh, but it's obviously not wet either. Just an overbrush on top of that with a really pale gray. And you'll see now you get these sort of gradients across the flats. You get these nice bright highlights on the edges. You get the brown in the recesses. And at the end of it all, you get a lovely Space Marine. So, so happy with this guy. Like I say, we did skip through a few bits in this tutorial purely because there are a lot of other tutorials where you see me do them. But the overall important parts here, the way we've highlighted that black, getting it up to a really bright pale turquoise, the shading gradients on the armor there, giving that really smooth transitioned yellow. Those are the things that you really want to take note of in this tutorial, I think. Those are the important parts of the workup. I'll let you enjoy the final rotation now. I really hope that you've uh, had as much fun with this one as I have, because I've loved it. There it is, my in-depth approach to painting the Imperial Fists. I've done a few bits of work on them over the years. They were a chapter that I was going to collect myself at one point. I bought Tor Garadon, all super enthusiastic to paint them, and then I couldn't find a way to do this work up in a really sort of battle-damaged way, because that's kind of how I like my Imperial Fists. Um, that sort of made me happy. I tried a few different things and none of them were really like, oh, this is going to be super long-winded for an army or something like that. And I ended up abandoning Imperial Fist and I'm so sad about that because they are a wicked chapter to paint. They're super, super fun. I had a really, really good time with this. I hope you had a good time watching it. If you do like the content that we're making here, please remember to hit that like button and to subscribe to the channel to help me with visibility. And if you like it so much that you want to help me continue doing it, please check the links below for my Patreon where you can get some fantastic benefits starting from as little as a dollar a month. Thank you everyone and I'll see you in the next one.